Yeah, whenever we started our tower that day, it was just like any other day, I mean. It's a, a pain that, that I hope nobody ever has to feel. And I come down the ladder and pull my glove off, and whenever I pull my glove off, it wasn't nothing further. We had our uh, elevators extended out and the hoses right here and your bells was right here. So I had my hand like that leaning out and doing it. And honestly, I really shouldn't have had my hand right there. But I mean, I didn't know nothing like that was going to happen. And uh, as I undone it, it just sat on top of my hand. And, and it only takes a split second for some, something real bad to happen. You work with them. Eat and drink with them. We use our hands and fingers for all kinds of things almost every minute of every day. In fact, we use them so much, we rarely give them a second thought. That is until we lose a finger or a hand is crushed. Make no mistake, hand injuries won't just ruin your day. As you've just learned, they will change your life forever. It's just something that I didn't want to look at. I didn't want my wife looking at it. I mean, it's just something I wouldn't, I wouldn't want nobody to go through. Keep them out of pinch points. Be more cautious of where you place them at. Cause I mean, them hands, them hands do, do your job for you. You can lose your whole hand and be stuck like that for the rest of your life. Not being able to work and do the things that you used to do. The best way to stay away from hand injuries is to start every job with a JSA. A complete job safety analysis is your first defense against hand injuries because it outlines the steps you'll need to complete your work safely. Your supervisor will also identify any hazards that you need to be on the lookout for. And finally, you'll learn about any preventative safety measures you should be aware of and what kind of PPE you'll need to keep you and your hands safe. And remember, there's no substitute for good common sense when it comes to avoiding hand injuries. Perhaps the best place to start using that common sense is on the rig floor. Making a connection and working with the tongs can mean a crushed finger or worse if you don't follow Gray Wolf safety procedures to the letter. Before you ever grab a tong, you should do a visual inspection and make certain the handle bump guards are secure and in place. These guards are there for your protection. Next, grip the yellow handles on the bottom tong firmly and connect it to the pipe first. Then use the same procedure and connect the top tongs to the pipe. Remember, bottom tongs first, followed by the top tongs, and never place your hand on the pipe for balance during a connection. This is a bad practice and has caused many unnecessary hand injuries. The slips are another piece of equipment that puts you at high risk for a hand injury. Before working with the slips, Begin by looking closely at the flexible slips handles. They should be in good working order and not bent or damaged. Next, make certain the driller has stopped the block completely before setting the slips. This is done to help prevent your hand from being smashed between the slips handle and the elevator. You should also never place your hands or feet around the slips while it's being set. And remember, use proper lift procedures and take care not to use too much force when pulling the slips up. You can smash your fingers on the elevator there as well. Each joint of pipe weighs well over 500 pounds. You can imagine what all that weight would do to a hand or finger that gets caught in the wrong place. When stabbing pipe, you should guide the pipe at arm's length with your hands and fingers in an open position. Some team members use a stabbing guide to help safely guide the pipe. Never under any circumstances place your hands or fingers near the box or the pin of either pipe. It should be painfully obvious that can cause serious injury. 
You should also never under any circumstances use your hands to roll a pipe. Always use a pipe roller and keep your body on the outer side of the pipe rack. You should also stay off of the top of the pipe rack at all times. If it takes two team members to roll a joint of pipe, so be it. Proper PPE is also the key to protecting your hands when mixing drilling mud or working with chemicals. Taking shortcuts here can lead to serious chemical burns. That's why you always have to put on chemical resistant gloves. And don't forget your dual cartridge respirator. Mud mixers are filled with caustic chemicals that will quickly burn and be absorbed into exposed skin. If you have any questions about any of the chemicals that you're working with, always ask your supervisor and consult the MSDS. Working safely with hand tools starts with using your head first, especially when you're working on equipment that uses dangerous energy sources like a pump. One of your team members was recently injured because of servicing a charging pump without following proper lockout tagout procedures. When the driller turned that pump on, the team member had part of her finger ripped away. Remember first to always follow proper lockout tagout procedures before working with hand tools around any equipment that uses dangerous energy sources. The golden rule for using hammer wrenches begins with keeping your hands and fingers out of the line of fire at all times. Use a sash card to stabilize a hammer wrench and never hold the wrench with your hand. When driving pins, hold the pin in place with a hog nose catcher. When taking pins out, tie a sash card onto the pin to keep control of it. Just remember that hand safety starts with you, so use common sense and don't cut corners. And watch out for your team members' hands and fingers as well. Most hand injuries happen because a team member does not follow proper Grey Wolf safety procedures. So keep your hands and fingers away from pinch points and hazards at all times. And remember the safety of you and your team members is in your hands.